the bell. Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic alongside Scarlett Fu. We're counting you down to the closing bell and here to help take us beyond the bell. It's a global simulcast with our friends Carol Masser and Tim Stenevic. Welcome to our audiences across all of our Bloomberg properties. Stocks on the back foot overall here, Carol Masser. Mm -hmm. but we should point out we're setting up too for a very busy uh, evening here with earnings uh, set to cross the wire. Yeah, right. And the headliner is Disney, which should be report in just a few minutes. So that's a big one. We'll watch the streaming numbers. But I'm thinking about Take-Two Interactive. Already had some good news about the next version of Grand Theft uh, Auto. And Take-Two Interactive went up about 5% in today's session. So a little bit of juice ahead of the earnings after the close today. Yeah, and as far as Disney goes, we're, of course, looking for streaming numbers when it comes to and, and number and losses, of course, when it comes to Disney+. Plus. Uh, in addition to that, we got Lyft after the bell as well, uh, reporting after we heard from Uber earlier this week, Scarlett. You know, I don't think we talk about video games enough. It's a bigger industry than movies at this point. Hey, are we, is, are there a big is. industry in your house, Scarlett? Says the mom I'm just wondering. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a lot of anger built in with that industry being successful. But <laughs> okay. yeah. I, was just, I was just wondering where that's coming from. <laughs> and you, make is, a, you do make a good point, though. It's big. It's really big. I think about screen time that they just did out on the West Coast, Bloomberg. You know, that's all part of it, the video game aspect. Yeah, absolutely, too. And it'll be interesting to see whether they say anything about this. I was pointing out a little early on the show that when they la announced the last uh, version of Grand Theft Auto number five here, it still took like more yeah. than a year for them to actually come out with it. So they kind of gave the teaser, the trailer, if you will, and then everybody just sort of twiddled their thumbs for, <laughs> uh, for months on end until they came did out with it. Did you twiddle your thumbs waiting? I did, but this could be big, Carol Master. Maybe I it agree. is the lubricant that actually takes uh, take two <laughs> to the next level. Well Let's done. walk through the numbers before we get to uh, the earnings here. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average going to finish out the day uh, in the red. That ends the winning streak for the Dow. Down about a tenth of a percent here on the day. But guess what? The S&P 500? Eight straight days of gains right now, only up a tenth of a percent here on that eighth day, but that continues the win streak and a similar win streak continuing for the NASDAQ composite, now up a ninth straight day. But once again, the gains today, very modest indeed, only up uh, eight, uh, about a tenth of a percent here uh, on the day. And then the Russell 2000 really just can't get out of its own way. Another down day for that major indice, down uh, more than a percent here on the day. Yeah, take a look at the S&P 500, uh, 229 names to the upside, Scarlett, 272 to the downside. So not quite Quite an even split, but close to it and too unchanged. All right, let's take a look at how the sector performed on the day. You have software and services leading the way up eight tenths of one percent, followed by commercial and professional services and REITs bringing up the rear there in terms of the top three best performing groups. On the downside, energy stocks taking a hit once again as crude oil prices fall below $75. WTI now below 75. It's now down 18 percent since late September. You also have food and staples, uh, some defensive sectors and utilities off by three quarters of one percent. All right, real quickly, as we wait for earnings, guys, Take-Two Interactive, as I mentioned, among the top gainers in the S&P 500, up about 5.2% in today's session. We know the news. We're all uh, the company, uh, Rocket Star, Rockstar Games, I should say. It's a division of Take-Two. They're going to begin promoting the next version of Grand Theft Auto uh, next month. So some excitement and, over that and, one. And it's hard to, understand, to, to state just how big of a deal this is. Well, I mean, it, this this is basically the most pop. I mean, if you exclude Minecraft, it's basically the most popular game out there. 185 and million yeah. copies sold of the previous version. Yeah. And you're right; it's the it's the second best selling video yeah. game. So it it's massive, right? In yeah. terms of how it can move the the needle. Um, Eli Lilly, uh, its own weight loss drug, uh, they introduced that stock was up about 3.2 oh, percent. Yeah. Uh, it was a diabetes drug. They've got Zep their bound. Zep That's what they named it. I know. Zep bound. I don't. I Why don't. and how did they come up with that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I actually don't think it's that bad. They paid consultants that. a lot of money <laughs> to come up with that. <laughs> Zep bound. Oh, I can think of some better ideas, but. <laughs> All right. So Eli Lilly mentioned, and real quickly, GoPro. I, I know it's yeah. a small market cap, but on the, nonetheless, uh, rallying about 18%. It's a $3 stock, guys. It's way down from when it was, what, 90 back in 2014. But nonetheless, um, reported third quarter yeah. results that beat expectations. Uh, before we get to some of the decliners yeah. here, uh, we're getting some earnings out of ARM. Remember, of course, uh, one of the new kids on the block. First earnings report uh, since they went public here. Uh, their fiscal numbers here on adjusted EPS basis looks like a pretty big beat. 36 cents versus 26 cents. And as far as revenue, also a significant beat there. 806 million in the quarter versus street estimates for roughly about 7 uh, 47 uh, million dollars in the quarter here. Their forecast going forward also looks like it's going to be coming in a slightly above analyst estimates, at least at the top end of that range. The company also saying, I think this is interesting, that in the most recent quarter, the number of chips that they shipped 
was down 6% mm. year over year. So not necessarily the strongest report uh, since they became public, but uh, not a huge disappointment either. Yeah, second quarter chips reported shipped uh, 7.1 billion, uh, down 6% year over year, Scarlett. Second quarter adjusted EPS uh, coming in above estimates, 36 cents. Uh, sees fiscal year adjusted EPS from $1 to $1.10. Shares uh, bouncing around in the after hours, but pretty much flat right now, down two tenths of 1%. All right, and of course, we'll continue to monitor what other earnings are coming out. That stock uh, extending its losses a little bit here, but definitely uh, bouncing around, as you mentioned. Um, I'm definitely looking ahead to Take Two. I'm looking ahead to Disney. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, um, you know, Disney not doing a whole lot as we wait for these results. Yeah. Tim, what decliners do you have? All right, yeah, let's talk about some decliners. I want to talk Warner Brothers Discovery. It's actually having its worst day on record. The company hasn't been, you know, in this iteration of it, hasn't uh, been publicly traded for too long, but down 19% as we speak. Um, the uh, company uh, reporting uh, it uh, after they reported a significant decline in network advertising and said the market may remain challenged next year. Uh, eBay shares also taking a hit uh, today. Shares finishing the data uh, down uh, about two, three percent as as we speak, two percent. Um, I'm actually the company is fascinated by this company. Is it the eBay like, one? Yeah, like I mean, what do you buy? If it's it's just what collectibles and car parts? I mean, or is there something broader going on? There's something broader going on. They're trying to compete with the likes of Walmart and Amazon, and the bleak holiday forecast in indicated to investors at least that they're not doing a very good job competing with Amazon and Walmart. So that's mm -hmm. the concern here. But I think you're right. It's 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 sort of, you know, seen as this auction site that that for years was where you would find collectibles like trading cards and things that were kind of hard to get and you'd, you'd bid on them, but they're trying to broaden out. Um, the company, as I mentioned, uh, is struggling as it loses shoppers to Amazon and Walmart, especially in this holiday quarter. And then finally, let's talk Robinhood. Shares of Robinhood falling the most in uh, nearly a year. Finished the day, day down by more than 14%. The company reported results for its most recent quarter, uh, fell short of estimates. Um, revenue came in below estimates. Monthly active users uh, came in below estimates. Piper Sandler yeah. uh, ended up cutting the price target. Let's get to Disney because that's just crossing the wire now, Roman. Yeah, Disney uh, crossing the wire here. The headline number uh, for the quarter is that Disney Plus subscribers 44Q, 150.2 million, the street was looking for 147 uh, and change here. So that looks like it is going to be a beak here uh, on the fiscal uh, streaming, on uh, the fiscal year streaming numbers, quarters, I should say here. But let's go on uh, to this other idea here that they say that they're on track to achieve $7.5 billion in cost savings. This is a big deal because previously they had said they were looking at about $5.5 billion. So two of the big metrics, guys, that we were really looking out for were how are they going to do on uh, subscriber growth? We're going to see a return to growth. We got that. And how are we going to see on costs and cost savings? And we also got that as well. Well, there's a couple of things in the press release I want to get to. Uh, the company's saying that they can continue to expect that their combined streaming businesses will reach profitability in the fourth quarter of fiscal year 24, although progress may not look linear from quarter to quarter. You mentioned cost. We continue to aggressively manage our cost base and have increased our annualized efficiency target to $7.5 billion versus $5.5 billion pre Previously. So they are definitely on an aggressive uh, cost containment campaign, if you will, Scarlett. Yeah, I'm looking at the sports business because this is the first time that Disney is breaking out the financials for its sports business. It's not clear why. We do know that Iger is looking for a partner or an investor in ESPN. They own the majority of it. Uh, Hearst owns another 20% of it. But in terms of sports revenue, $3.91 billion was the reported number. Consensus estimate was for $3.89 billion. And for ESPN Plus, the subscriber coming in a little bit less than what analysts had anticipated, 26 million even. Analysts were looking for 26.3 million. ESPN wants, uh, Disney wants to turn ESPN into a digital mm. product, and I'm not sure how that meshes with ESPN Plus. Yeah, well, they got to, well, yeah, well, they got to get out uh, some of those carriage contracts. I mean, we were talking with Michael Wolf at Activate earlier, and he actually talked about that. I guess they still are getting a lot of fees out of the cable companies, and that makes up for, I guess, whatever deficiency they have in not being able to put some of that content on uh, on, on a it's, streaming platform. But at some point, they've got to reconcile that. The fact of the matter is, we're just not watching this stuff on cable anymore. Exactly, and that's part mm -hmm. of the issue is, you know, there are, there are now so many more places to get this content. You have Amazon bidding for this stuff. You have Apple potentially bidding for this stuff, right? You have all these OTT services and platforms that didn't exist when ESPN was the place to go uh, to watch this stuff. I mean, Fox as well, but you know, the comp there's so much more competition out there that it's harder and harder to get this stuff uh, uh, on the cheap.
All right, guys, we've got Disney up about one and a half percent. Take two, though, on the downside. Uh, still sees their fiscal year net bookings five point forty five billion to five point five five billion. So we're just starting to get some headlines. So we'll continue to track that. I know you guys will as well. All right. That's a wrap. Our cross platform coverage, radio, TV, YouTube and of course, Bloomberg Originals. We will see you again. Same time, same place tomorrow.